so in this video I'm going to try to cover the basics of physics in Second Life since the advent of MeSH. There's quite a bit to learn and there's a lot of things that are undocumented and I'm not going to cover everything but I'm going to do my best. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up my SketchUp asset here. This is a unified file that contains both the geometry and the physics uh, mesh overlaid on top of each other. They are grouped so that they don't merge. Everybody's going to have their own method, but I find this is what works best for me, mainly because I can inspect uh, the information and make sure that everything is accurate before I upload. And also, uh, it helps with the uh, positioning since the files are at exactly the same coordinates. And this isn't always important, but it can be sometimes. So, in terms of physics in Second Life, the whole point of the physics system is, well, primarily for avatars to interact with geometry in Second Life in a realistic way. Um, in addition to avatars, every other uh, object that has physics enabled will interact realistically with your physics mesh. So it's very important to keep in mind that that is the actual purpose of physics at all times. In terms of economics, like land impact, well there's only one thing really to remember there and that's that the more simple your geometry is, the lower your land impact is going to be for physics as well as for actual geometry. But in terms of the physics mesh, it's going to basically be invisible. So you can get away with quite a bit more in terms of simplifying the mesh than you can with the vis visible geometry. So you can see right away the difference between these two models. There's quite a, a few subtle differences and a few more extreme differences. But that should give you a general idea of how you can simplify your model in order to reduce the land impact for physics. And since I use an iterative process, I don't have to create these low poly physics meshes from scratch. I just go back into my model evolution chain here and find one of my rougher versions and then I just extract the low poly from that and modify it to suit my needs in terms of the uh, physics for the high poly and that saves me a lot of time so that I think that's one of the useful tricks that I've learned and that uh, won't be suitable for every model but it will be for most so moving to blender This is what the model looks like after it's been unwrapped and textured. Now this model is somewhat unique in the sense that I had to mirror the initial component in Blender because Second Life doesn't support mirroring. And that actually uh, multiplied the uh, poly count by quite a bit. And I could have simplified that in this version, but I was a little bit lazy. I just want to point that out so no one gets the wrong idea here uh, that this is supposed to be ultra optimized. It clearly is not. As you can see it has uh, 1,388 triangles. I could have brought that down a little, but I chose not to. And uh, here's the physics mesh in Blender. This is only 360 triangles. Once again, this was also mirrored, so I could have brought that down even farther, but I have learned that as long as your geometry is well composed, uh, you, you won't see a significant um, negative effect to your land impact. Although every little optimization does help, but there's sort of a, a law of diminishing returns past a certain point. So even though I could have simplified this further, in the end I judged that 
it would not have made a huge difference to the land impact. So I went with this model. So basically those are the two assets that are needed for realistic physics for this particular object. And now I'm going to just show what the upload process would be like for that, even though I've already uploaded. So build upload model. So bridge house, that's the main geometry and then bridge house physics is the physics mesh. Now, this is kind of an important step here. I think uh, previewing, you can use the preview window just like you would the ordinary Second Life controls to inspect your model. Titling, obviously, this stuff is basic, it's not really relevant to physics, but I'm going to cover it anyway. Since this is a large, non-moving object, that's what I would select. And uh, Now this is something that I certainly will not recommend for everyone, and it would definitely not apply to every object that people upload, but this is, this is my particular method for large objects like this, and I think it works fairly well, and that is to um, take the lower three LODs, medium, low, and lowest, and on medium I'm just going to go load from file, and what I'm going to load is my physics model there. And then I'm going to take the bottom two, low and lowest, and use LOD above. So basically what I have here are only two LODs. I have my high poly right here for the um, close up and then I have my low poly for the bottom three. Now you won't want to do that with objects that are intricate and small obviously but it works just fine for something large like this and I found that even at a reasonably uh, long distance the uh, geometry will not um, go down to the uh, lower LODs. So I'm just going to check uh, generate normals, just for the hell of it, and then go to the physics tab, and once again I'm going to select my physics, and then I'm going to turn physics on so I can actually see the physics. Now this is where things get kind of interesting, and this is another little trip, uh, a tip that you only learn through trial and error normally you can click analyze and that's fine that gives you a a nice clear-cut um, representation of the physics but if you click simplify that's going to just uh, average out the entire um, physics area into this really crude and completely dysfunctional physics shape which is fine for objects that you're not going to be interacting with physically your avatar but in terms of a structure like this which has internal components windows and walkways and stuff this simply will not do luckily you can just go back and click analyze again and that will reset your physics shape to the actual physics data instead of that averaged version so this is basically good to go I would just click back on level of detail calculate weights and fees land impact of 13 physics of one, that's fairly decent for an object of this uh, scale. And then I would click upload. So this is basically what I would have, one of these segments. Of course I copied and rotated it, but this is basically what I would have after importing. Aside from one really important thing, and this is something that as far as I know is not documented anywhere, and it's actually crucial. Um, when you first upload, if you go to this features tab, this uh, physics shape type will be set to convex hull, and this will be set to wood. And now, if you'll notice here, my avatar is now walking on air, and that's because this uh, physics shape has actually been changed and 
although you can't see it in here, there is an actual way to see it in Second Life, and I'm going to cover that too. That's uh, another one of the important tips in this video. So, <coughs> you want to go to Preferences and Advanced, and then Show Advanced Menu, Show Developer Menu, and click OK. So now you have these two menus up here, which are very useful for all sorts of advanced operations. But this is the important menu, the develop menu. So you want to go to develop, render metadata, and physics shapes. So as you, as you can see, the actual physical shapes of the objects are now showing up. This one is kind of flickering in and out of existence, which is annoying, so I'm going to just very rapidly clone another one of these so that you can see what's going on here. When I change this to convex hull, you can see how the physics shape has changed into this crude, averaged version that we saw before when the physics mesh was simplified. So, in other words, when you import an object into Second Life for the first time, a mesh object, the native physics shape is set to convex hull, which basically does not use the physics shape that you have uploaded at all. You actually need to, the first thing that I always do is I go to features, I change convex hull to prim, and then I change the material to the appropriate material. So that actually activates the physics shape so that it's uh, implemented properly. And that's pretty much the um, the core uh, aspects of physics that I think will help just about anyone get started. And uh, one more little thing here. This is actually, I guess, a bug of some kind. I'm not really sure, but I've noticed this, and it has thrown me off a couple times, so I think it's worth pointing out. If you have the physics shapes metadata enabled, and then you sit on an object, it actually turns invisible. In other words, the physics shape just disappears. It's still there, but it disappears. God only knows why. And uh, it won't reappear again until you restart your viewer. So just something to be aware of. And uh, yeah, so that's that's the basic basic uh, idiosyncrasies of the Second Life physics system. And I hope you found this video useful, and uh, good luck on your builds.